TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Iranian hackers target Israeli civilian companies merely a week after the Islamic Republic blamed the United States and Israel for a wide-scale cyber attack on its petroleum and banking-related national infrastructure. Unidentified aircraft destroy a number of Iranian-controlled posts that were situated in the western countryside of Damascus. Lebanon's relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia falter over the conflict in Yemen, which has reached a critical juncture in time. An Iranian-linked group of hackers, which call themselves Black Shadow, have ratcheted up their attacks against civilian companies in Israel merely a week after the Islamic Republic Civil Defense Organization head, Brigadier General Golam Reza Jalali, accused the United States and Israel for crippling Iran's petroleum and banking-related national infrastructure. While General Jalali's voiced allegation did not derive from substantiated facts, the sophistication of the cyber attack on Iran's infrastructure immediately raised suspicions among Ayatollah regime officials that the most cyber-capable enemies of Tehran, including Washington and Jerusalem, were behind the attack. Consequently, the so-called Black Shadow claimed responsibility for a malicious attack against the Israeli web hosting company CyberServe, which acknowledged this past weekend that it is dealing with an Iranian cyber terror event. Well, Israel's National Cyber Directorate said in a statement that it had warned CyberServe several times of being vulnerable. The Iranian-linked hackers managed to penetrate a number of websites, including of Israeli public transportation companies Dan and Kavim, a medical system called Doctor Ticket that stores sensitive information of patients, a children's museum, and the Israeli tourism operator Pegasus, amongst others. The web hosting company CyberServe was not immediately available for TV7's query into the reported attacks. Turning to Israel's northern neighbor Syria, where unidentified aircraft launched multiple precision-guided munitions toward a number of militant posts that were situated in the western countryside of Damascus, causing extensive damage. According to local sources, warehouses belonging to Iranian proxy militias were destroyed and secondary explosions were observed from afar. Separately, an intelligence source who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity underlined that the target struck were situated in an area known as a staging ground for smuggling operations. It is interesting to further note that Syria's aerial defense array failed to respond to the attack. And while the Damascus regime naturally pointed a blaming finger toward Israel, further insisting that the attack only caused material damage, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its alleged responsibility in a response to TV7's request for comment. Turning to Jerusalem, where Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett proclaimed, during a cabinet meeting that was held after his return from the Glasgow Climate Summit early this morning, that Israel's international standing is strengthening and that Jerusalem is no longer defined by the conflict or by its enemies. The Israeli leader went on to highlight the recent international aerial maneuver that took place in Israel, namely Blue Flag, which concluded on Thursday of last week, in which the Israeli Air Force was joined by its counterparts from the United States, France, Britain, Germany, Italy, India and Greece, among others. Separately, alongside the month-long Northern Command exercise and a nationwide home front command drill that started today, Premier Bennett chose to mention a parallel exercise that was launched earlier this week between the IDF and U.S. Naval Forces Central Command. כל המפקדים היו כאן בחדר ושמעתי הרבה מחמאות לחיל האוויר הישראלי ולאווירת שיתוף הפעולה. ועוד תרגיל שמתקיים בזמן שאנחנו מדברים באילת של חיל הים שלנו ושל חיל הים האמריקאי, הפיפלית של סנדקום. מי שצריך לקבל את המסר, מקבל. 
Well, Prime Minister Bennett's assertion that all of the respective multilateral and joint exercises that are being held in Israel constitute a clear signal the Islamic Republic may not be convinced that political will exists to utilize those multilateral forces to thwart its malign behavior in the region. This became apparent earlier today when the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps released a statement in which it claimed that during an incident in which the U.S. Navy intercepted two Iranian oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman, supposedly tankers on course to deliver oil in breach of U.S. sanctions, the IRGC Navy managed to intercept the U.S. Navy vessels and regain control of the Iranian oil tankers who were rerouted back to the Islamic Republic's territorial waters. It is important to note, however, that while the RGC boasted over its proclaimed success against the U.S. Navy, it released outdated footage, which it claimed to be from the altercation, even though the video is identical to footage it broadcast on a number of occasions over a month ago. Separately, the U.S. Fifth Fleet reportedly denied that any such encounter took place. Turning to Yemen, where Iranian-backed Houthi militants are in preliminary stages of laying a comprehensive siege against Maghrib City, which is the last stronghold of the internationally recognized government of Yemen. Should Maghrib govern at fall to the Houthis or Ansar Allah in Arabic, it would deal a strategic blow, first and foremost to Saudi Arabia and its regional allies, including Israel, since the largest portion of the terror-plagued country will fall into the hands of the Islamic Republic of Iran. It is also interesting to know that earlier this year, in June, the Biden administration decided to sharply reduce the number of aerial defense batteries that were deployed in Iraq, Kuwait, Jordan and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as part of Washington's realignment of its global military posture to accommodate its pivot eastward to contend with challenges emanating from China and Russia. When asked earlier this week in an interview to CNBC whether the refer to withdrawal drove the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to open exploratory dialogue with the Islamic Republic, Riyadh's top diplomat said the following. So that Patriot missile battery was mainly there to protect uh, U.S. forces in a place. So it didn't really materially affect our ability to defend the kingdom. As you can see, we have been quite successful in defending the kingdom against the ongoing attacks from uh, Houthi militia, well over uh, uh, 400 intercepted uh, missiles and drones. So we are fully able to defend ourselves. Uh, our interest in these talks is based on our desire to refocus the attention of the region from addressing crises to building prosperity. The United States has stated quite publicly and quite uh, frequently that they are committed to the defense of the kingdom and to our uh, defense of our territory. I take them at their word. It is important to know that while the United States under the Biden administration withdrew practical support from the Saudi-led offensive against the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen, over proclaimed humanitarian related reasons, which included the revocation of the Trump administration's decision to designate the Houthis for what they are, a terrorist organization, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has maintained a low profile in contending with the new American approach. Nevertheless, in contrast to its non existence response to Washington's measures, Riyadh, alongside other Arab Gulf capitals, voiced outrage over remarks made by Lebanese Information Minister George Koldahi, who voiced criticism of the Saudi-led intervention against Iran's efforts to conquer Yemen by means of proxy war. Consequently, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates recalled their respective ambassadors from Lebanon and demanded the minister's immediate resignation. The Lebanese row with the Gulf monarchies naturally alarmed both Beirut's elite and ordinary citizens alike at a time when their country is seemingly on the verge of collapse. Uh, uh, لبناني مصريات وراحوا الوضع المعيشي صعب كثير هذه نحن ما طالع بيدنا نحن كلبنانيين ما طالع بيدنا شيء despite Riyadh's evident reason for reprimanding Beirut 
Lebanon's Foreign Minister Abdullah Abu Habib insisted that the remarks made by the Lebanese Information Minister were merely a trigger for Saudi Arabia's anger against the Iranian proxy Hezbollah, which plays a significant role in support of the Houthis in Yemen. <laughs> In addition to the seeming futile attempts by the Lebanese top diplomat to mend the fences by redirecting the current row to Hezbollah's terror-related activities throughout the region at the behest of Iran, the Lebanese information minister, who is allied with the Shiite proxy of Iran, signaled that demanding his resignation would cause the recently appointed Beirut government to collapse. <laughs> Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Ethiopia once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.